Hello again Year 9, this is Lesson 7 in the series of lessons about transport across membranes and it is all about active transport. You may wish to have a pause here so you can write down what you think active transport is and then check it back later on. So there are three objectives in this lesson. The first is to know that active transport requires an energy input. Secondly, is to know the source of energy for active transport. And thirdly, to know some examples of active transport in both plants and animals. What we already know is about all about diffusion and osmosis. Diffusion involves the movement of gases or dissolved particles down a concentration gradient. There's a couple of examples given on the slide here. Um, oxygen and carbon dioxide in blood, the products of digestion or photosynthesis in plants and animals. Osmosis only involves the movement of water and it goes from a less concentrated solution where there is more water to a more concentrated solution where there is more solute and less water. There is a quick summary diagram here. If you would like to copy this down, you may pause the video to do so. I think it's quite a handy diagram myself. Now, passive both osmosis and diffusion are described as passive transport systems. This is because the cell or organism doesn't need to use any energy for the process to occur. The process occurs simply because there is a difference in concentration and they call that difference in concentrations a concentration gradient and that is all that is required. No energy input, just the maintaining the difference in concentrations. So active transport is actually the opposite of passive transport because it actually means that there is an energy requirement and this is what plants and animals use if they need to take in a substance which they already have quite a lot of in fact they have more of it within them than there is outside it but so the, that substance has to move against the concentration area gradient and it has to move across a partially permeable membrane and going against the concentration gradient means it goes from an area with low concentration to an area that already has a higher concentration I guess a good example might be um, your brother or sister has more sweets than you and you want to take some of those sweets and get more of your own. You already have a lot of sweets and you want to get more from your brother or sister even though it wouldn't necessarily be fair. So why do cells need to be able to move substances against the concentration gradient? They need to do that in order to absorb ions from very dilute solutions. Ions if you can remember are molecules that have gained or lost electrons they have a plus or minus charge to them and examples of these will be things like nitrates that are dissolved in water in the soil which plants need in order to function it also allows the movement of sugars and ions through within an organism so they can allow you to take in ions i absorb them or it can allow you to move them through the organism and this requires the use of energy this energy is produced by cellular respiration which means that many mitochondria are going to be required in cells that take part in active transport because mitochondria are the site of energy production and respiration means energy production not breathing that is a common confusion so make sure you get the meaning of respiration in this context clear and the rate of respiration, in other words, how quickly respiration is occurring, and the rate of active transport, in other words, how quickly these ions can be taken up, are very closely linked. If you have a slow rate of respiration, there's not a lot of energy being produced, you will have a slow rate of active transport. If you can increase the rate of respiration, the rate of active transport will also increase and that is why you will have more mitochondria because more mitochondria means more respiration which means more available energy. Now we've already talked about plants earlier and the root hair cells that they have in their bases with regards to osmosis we know that water is taken in there but plants root hair cells are also the site of active transport and once again 
we have got our vacuole which instead of just sitting in the main body of the cell actually extends all the way down through the protuberance the root hair extension which increases the surface area and that is helpful for osmosis because it allows more water to move in it's also helpful for active transport because it's got a larger area in which it can absorb minerals and in this case the minerals the little nitrate ions are shown as red dots and as you can see there's already quite a few within the cells but the plant needs more of them so it needs to be able to actively take them up from within the water that is surrounding the root hair cell that is external to the plant and that process requires active transport because it's going from an area with a low concentration of nitrate ions into the plant cell which already has a higher concentration of ions. Now in animals we also use active transport. Um, in the small intestine which is where you actually absorb the products of digestion into your main bloodstream um, sugars can sometimes be moved by active transport and that's because you actually need to, you need to keep a constant level of glucose in your bloodstream and sometimes if for example you haven't eaten recently there'll be more glucose in your bloodstream than there is in the intestine but you'll still need to take up the blood that is within the intestine in order to keep that constant level within the bloodstream and similar processing happens in the kidney tubules. Um, there's a very weird example here. Um, crocodiles, okay? They have salt glands in their tongues. I do not know who was actually brave enough <laughs> to go looking in a crocodile's mouth to look at the salt glands, but apparently they do. And that is because they can either, crocodiles can live in seas, in salty waters, in estuaries, which are parts of rivers where they have a tidal flow, so there is still salt within the water. It's, and they are not fresh water. Alligators live in fresh water, crocodiles live in seawater. And because of that, they can end up with a, quite a lot of water, salt in their body. But obviously there's a lot more salt outside their body, so they need to actually use active transport to actually remove salt. So it's not just about taking things in, sometimes it be, can, can be about removing things from your environment as well. Now, to find out more about this, there is an additional YouTube link here. I have also put this on the worksheet. This has some nice animations, uh, better than I can manage, <laughs> and further explanations. So you've got the main lesson from me, this extra information here, and you have a worksheet which you will probably be completing as you go along. Um, but the answers that you couldn't find from this video are in the second video here. Thank you very much. Well done, Year 9.